Pad Ronta is coming to be here, and today I'm going to be reviewing the third Doctor story, The Time Warrior. Now, this is quite a classic story for a number of reasons. Um, number one is because it introduces Sarah Jane Smith, who is one of the most well known Doctor companions, one of the most popular as well. In fact, um, she was recently voted the number one companion in um, a Doctor Who magazine poll. So, yeah, she's definitely an uh, extremely popular companion. And while she's not my personal favourite, I do think she's a very good companion. And I think she's played to perfection by Elizabeth Sladen, especially in this story, and I'll get onto that a bit later. Another reason is because it introduces us on Tarans, who are quite classic villains, I guess. While they have been quite poorly treated sometimes over the years, I mean, especially in the new series recently. Um, in Stephen Moffat's run, where they're basically just a joke, to be honest. Um, but I think, and even sometimes in the classic series, they weren't at their best. At least then they were threatening, but they so had problems. But here, if you um saw my review of the Sultan experiment, you remember me saying about. Um, I think they were either at the best here or here, and I'll talk about that in a bit as well. And it's also kind of like the beginning of the end for the John Pertwee era, really, because I mean, we've got a new title sequence which is very similar to what will become um, Tom Baker's title sequence. And I think John Pertwee decided he was leaving at this point. It was announced to the public at this point that it was announced to the public in Invasion of Dinosaurs, but he knew he was leaving at this point because of, um, well, a lot of other people were leaving. Producer Barry Letts was leaving, Terence Fix was leaving, Katie Manning had already left the previous story, and Roger Delgado had tragically um, passed away in a road accident in Turkey. So, yeah, I think at this point, John Pertwee had kind of like had enough. He knew an era was coming to an end and he decided to leave. And five years is quite good for a doctor, and I must say that this story is. A great story and it's also the only story to be set in the past the only historical I guess you'd say of the um John Pertwee era which is quite odd when you think about it but for the past year you had a lot of um earthbound stories not past year sorry for the past couple of years in Doctor you had a couple of quite a lot of earthbound stories with the Doctor's Exile and there were also um other things and then what, every once in a while when he got his TARDIS he went off to another planet. And during the um um sorry, Patrick Trouton era as well. I to think during his last season. Um yeah, during his last season. You never went to the past. You almost did for um the war games in World War One, but that wasn't actually World War One and whatnot. So yeah, to be honest, Doctor itself. Not just in John Pertwee's era, but had it been to the past for a long time. So it's unique for that fact. So now, getting on to the story itself, I think I do love this story. I'll just put that out there. I think Sarah Jane Smith in this is quite possibly at her best. Um, Blood Axe and oh, I've forgotten his name now. The um, the Iron Gron. That's it. Blood Axe and Iron Gron. They are a good double act, they work very well together. I think Iron Gron himself is a very enjoyable character. He's a very villainous character as well, and I think he's very enjoyable. I like the medieval setting, I think that's very good for this story. I like the way that the companion kind of gets caught up in it all, and I think Sarah Jane Smith does an excellent job. She's kind of like, she very much takes it in her stride, I guess, but, but still makes it able to be believable because you have a lot of companions nowadays who kind of like take it in their stride and it's a bit beyond belief. Whereas Sarah Jane Smith, she kind of like she doubts it at times and whatnot, and well, she very much she does kind of like take the lead and whatnot and get scared of the young people. You can still see her being scared, and in one of the special features on this, um, they were talking about. Barry Letts talked about how he casted um, Elizabeth Sladen. He said he had people showing he had people showing him 
either Sarah being brave or Sarah being scared. But Elizabeth Slaven was the only person who did both at the same time, and I think that's true, and I think that's a very good part of her character in this. And John Pertwee's good in this. I, I'm gonna put this out there. I do think that I um, prefer the Doctor and the um, Doctor and Sarah relationship in this to the um. Uh, not in this, sorry, the third Doctor and Sarah relationship to the fourth Doctor and Sarah relationship. Only by a bit, but I do prefer it. I like the way he um pokes fun at her and whatnot, and her um, kind of like feminist movement ideas and whatnot. And I think that's very good for this. So I do like that part about it. So, yeah. Now, links to Sontaran. Um... The Sontarans themselves, I like them, but I think they have got rather a mixed bag um, in Doctor Who. In this, they are quite possibly at their best. If you remember me talking about um, in the Sontaran experiment, I do think they were probably just at their best in that. I think they were better portrayed in that. The portrayals are very similar. It's the same actor as well. But I think ultimately they were just that little bit better in that. But I do really like them here. Sorry about this Facebook noise. This is everyone. Just, it's not um, your computer making those noises. It's mine. But yeah, anyway. That's just completely ruined my train of thought. So oh, my goodness. Sorry about this, everyone. Um, oh yeah. Uh, Russell Tarrant's, I think he's a bit more humorous in this. Um, links to Sontaran. I think, um, yeah, he is a very good character in this, and you get this humour, but it's not like a new series humour, where it's just kind of like making fun and mocking it sometimes, to make him seem stupid, it's very much a humour in the essence of, kind of like, not used to Earth um, ways and whatnot, but it doesn't compromise his villainy, which I think is very good. Um, so yeah, I like that about it. Whereas ultimately, I do prefer the Sontaran portrait out in the Sontaran experiment. It is still amazing here. So now, moving on from the Sontarans, or Sontaran in this case. Okay. I think the um, design work on this is very good. It's very believable. It does kind of have that studio quality to it, where it's not entirely real, but... I could get past that. Um, so yeah, you've also so yeah, you've got Iron Ron and Blood Axe and whatnot on one side, and then you've got um, the Earl of Wessex, I think it is, and oh, I've forgotten her name. So yeah, um, the woman who's with him, I think she. It's interesting because she's a stronger character than the Earl is. So yeah, I think that's I think that's quite good. And you've also got the archer Hal. And he's quite he's quite an enjoyable character. And yet he's one of those characters who you could he's one of those almost companions who you could very easily see popping into the TARDIS at the end. And in fact they were actually thinking about that at the time. So yeah, that's good. I think. Would I have liked him to go in the TARDIS? I don't... I probably wouldn't have. Excuse me. He's a good character in this, but I don't think he would have um, worked as a companion in the long run. But, yeah, anyway, I think that's... It. The story itself... Oh, sorry, I forgot one character first. Let's talk about Rubish. Now, Rubish is one of the only weak links in the story. Not because he's a bad character or badly written at all. But just because of his placement, kind of like wandering about the laboratory. Now, they did mention this on the DVD commentary, not commentary, sorry, um, DVD special features about how he's just kind of like wandering about. You know, he's allowed free roam of everything. Lynx doesn't try to stop him. He just helps Doctor and List him every once in a while. And that never really occurred to me while watching the actual story. But now that I've, now that it's been brought up to me, I just think, yeah, that is a bit of a problem. I can't really explain that. 
and it's just yeah it's quite unfortunate that I think I think that could have been better um done so um yeah I think now the story itself is very good I think the plot was very well thought out I think it's very good to have a historical with kind of like all these um, features and whatnot, and the idea of changing history—it's kind of—it's very much for the background that idea, but it's still there. And I think overall, it's a very enjoyable story, and it's probably quite possibly Sarah Jane Smith at her best in her first story. And it's probably my favourite companion debut, and I think no doubt for me it is that. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go ten out of ten. I'm I was thinking about nine out of ten. It is very close. It's on that borderline. But you know what, I think I'm gonna be kind today and I'm gonna go ten out of ten because I really do like this story. It's a very enjoyable story. And if you haven't got it, I do suggest you pick it up. So that's all for this week. Next week's review not entirely sure yet, probably be a sixties review. So, yeah, thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you all next week. Bye everyone.